Welcome. You're listening to How I Did That, a storytelling podcast. Let's jump into today's episode. Today we are joined by recent chemical engineering graduate, Angidbir Sandhu, here to talk about his journey through college and offer some insight into the metaphor behind Dinosaur Party. Hello. Hello. Is that, I can turn off my fan and I'll just be... Yeah, yeah, that, that might be better. Okay, Google. Okay, Turn good. off bedroom fans. This is it. We nailed it. Here, we did it. Yourself. Perfect run. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm Angus. Uh, I'd spell that out, but that's just going to be... Spell it out. Spell it out. Uh, so I'll just, you know, I don't need to give you my whole government name, you know. Check me out on LinkedIn and my mixtape on SoundCloud. I don't have a mixtape. Um, Angus, A-N-G-A-D. I'm Neha's friend. She asked me to do this. I don't really feel super qualified, but I do like to hear myself talk, so I can't miss the opportunity when you can take it. Um, I think the thing... I'm not an expert really in anything. Yeah, I've got a chemical engineering degree, and I think I did pretty okay in my classes. Um, but, you know, I'm at the early stages of industry, but what I do know a lot about is failing all the time. <laughs> and that's something I can talk about openly and freely. Um... And particularly my own personal context is, uh, you know, as an Indian man, uh, there's a huge stigma to being open about your emotions in general, let, let alone being open about mental health or, uh, you know, any setbacks you have. So my idea is, yeah, and this might not be for everyone, it's just to be kind of open about my own experience and just have it mm-hmm. uh, maybe connect with someone. All right. Um, right. So I think a neat thing about my experience is I had terrible freshman year i did okay but i just didn't really make friends my second year wasn't the greatest um and i think that's true for a lot of people at college if you don't join a club and i was too cool for school uh um and i didn't do any of that the thing where i kind of made my connections on campus was when i applied to be a resident advisor uh on campus what that role is is basically someone that just lives on university housing and just provides a uh, support network and it's something as easy as hey I've got an issue with my room helping someone put in a work order just essentially like a resource agent that very rarely did I have that much decision making power um, it was just mostly uh, a quick and easy resource for other students on campus so yeah it was fun I, I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't fun um, and uh, a big thing where I did have agency was putting in program requests. And I'm very lucky because I, super- I had a supervisor that was always encouraging me to do dumber and dumber things. Um, when they asked me to do this, uh, there's one in particular that actually is the basis of our friendship. Uh, and I don't even know if she registers it as that, but I do. Um, but the thing with programs where they were events designed to promote uh, maybe there's the ones that are for pure enjoyment and build kind of a sense of community on campus. There are the other ones that kind of say to educate people more on stuff like diversity, and inclusion, uh, professional development. It was a lot of either spaces for growth or community building. Um, and I always, I never really enjoyed the um, standard ones that are like, "Hey guys, we're having a study night and I got hot cocoa. Let's study together." And it's like that's that's great and like it's, those are fun to go to. Um, but I figured that. If I'm going to do it, I'd want to, I guess, market it to myself. Maybe I'm self-centered in that way. But doing something kind of weird and odd, Bali, so they have to at least check it out. And, like, if I'm the dorkiest one in the room, I hope that gives people some comfort. Um, because it's like, no matter what, you won't be as dorky as I did as I am. Um, and in that, you know, people standardly did, like, study nights or um, we're watching a movie night. And I, yeah, I did that, too. But I also, I'm just going to go through a list of programs because when Neha asked me to check it out, I went through all my old posters, uh, and these are the programs that did happen you're talking, didn't happen. You're talking to me, so <laughs> why are you referring to me in the third person? I, I, I'm imagining, so one, I talked to everyone in the third person. Okay. okay so, Neha, wait, damn it. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I, I didn't know how to mark this, so this is okay, a conversation with you. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I get it now. Second person, first person, or just everyone. Angith is a little confused. Does Angith talk to Neha, or does Angith talk to an audience in front of Neha? 
But all right, so uh, I, I know you've seen some of them, but I I had a bunch of little programs like the Goosebumps Cringe Fest, where we got a bunch of Halloween candy and we just watched Goosebumps and just cringed together at a young Ryan. So Gosling. when you say programs, um, for the listeners, what are those? The, those are they, so what they were are events that were either designed to build community or kind of allow uh, residents to have growth. Um, that could be professionally, that could be an educational ability, that could just be making your friends. But the idea is that you could live on campus as just like a living space or really have a sense of community. It's event planning, right? Oh, it's so, just okay. like a fun. So you made it's these like, as I, a as an RA, you would make these programs for the students yeah. living there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I, I, I this is one of the spaces where I had the most agency. Like, um, and I always aspired to do something dumb because I felt like you can get a lot of the same things that are being dumb, but it's way less awkward because you guys all know how stupid it is. You guys can't ever. It's much easier to get any. Uh, get over any tension of like oh, i don't want to seem awkward like i'm in the room you will not be the most awkward person in the room um but yeah my first few i remember i did destroy something beautiful where we made pinatas just to destroy them to deal with it i failed at making all of them pinatas so it was just a paper mache club a goose uh, goosebumps cringe fest where we just kind of had halloween candy and, and just vented uh, we had one that was kind of about inner peace which was bob Ross bingo where we printed out bingo sheets of uh uh, either colors or phrases Bob Ross would say and just rot, watch a random episode. And the first one we win, we get like, I think I made a silly photo of Bob Ross. And I'm like, here you go. I had programs that were not the right ones to do um, because I had recently watched Trapped in the Closet by R. Kelly and I had not been educated on just the extent of uh, a lot of the hurtful stuff he'd been doing other people so i was originally going to have this big program that would watch all the trapped in the closet and then we would try to get as much done as what happens at trapped in the closet what it's is insane. trapped in the closet you've never seen trapped in the closet no. what trapped in the closet is is it's uh r kelly made a 33 chapter multi-part music video that's like part opera and it's all nonsense um really and yeah at one point there is on multiple point there are people cheating uh, it, it starts obviously with R. Kelly trapped in the closet itself. Um, there, there is a little person uh, that is the father of a child. Like it, it is, I cannot do traffic closet justice. So what I had just watched it, I was thriving because I'm like, wow, this was an experience, and I wanted to watch it with a group of people, and it's two hours in total, and see, can we like bring puzzles, bring homework? Can we as a group? 20 people do more than R. Kelly did in two hours to trap in the closet. Um, but this was before uh, you like knew the stuff he was doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was it was a fun idea. I still have a poster. Yeah. Um, uh, and the, the caption on the poster is like, what can you do in 20 hours that R. Kelly cannot? Which now just looks bad, but I think it's important <laughs> yeah, to be open, <laughs> <laughs> open about what your mistakes were. Um, and that turned to time travel, time management, where we watched Back in the Future, uh, Back to the Future, and tried to do as many things as we could. I've never watched uh, Back to the Future. It, it's a fun time. It's a fun movie to watch. And then the idea is we just do homework and just chill out. Uh, and this is the longest name program I had, which was Netflix and Chill. We're just <laughs> watching movies. I swear to God, if you even as much as hold hands, I'm kicking you out of this event. It's Dash R.A. Unga. That's the name of the program. Nice. Um, uh, uh, Did you just I, come up uh, with all of these yourself? Yeah, because again, I had a lot of fun and like a STEM. Ma- I am a STEM major who hates STEM sometimes. So like, I really thrived in doing silly, kind of very creative. Stuff. Because like the the thing is, people were very um, uh, traditional, and I knew other people were doing events that uh, would meet those like study nights criteria. So my responsibility in my mind was. I get to do the weird stuff. I um, like the destroy something beautiful pinata. Did you make all the? Did you get them to make all pinatas? I, I, I tried to. I just didn't know how to make paper mache, and the things were too long, and it was soggy, and there's like glue all over my right. floor for like a week. Okay. And I was just like, no. But that was my first ever program, and I'm like, oh gosh. And then the thankfully, when I was new, I had friends that were like, it, it happens, man. Who? Yeah. <laughs> No, I've tried making pinatas, and um, you have to like put the 
newspaper with the glue all over the balloons and then let it dry and then add yeah, another layer. Thin strips, very thin yeah, strips. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. I did not. So it was just weird <laughs> saggy falls in the corner. Um, so, you know, that, that uh, went where the way it went. Uh, I, I had Can You Beat the Wizard? Which, um, is this like Harry Potter and, thing? It was one of the posters, but there's a there's a game on Nintendo Switch called One Two Switch, and there's a mini game in that called Wizard Battle, where you just put like essentially the little rem- uh, controller, which is like a TV remote, and you just make you know you just extend your arm like it's a wizard battle, and we did that one to play the game as an excuse and try to get props. And I remember we didn't get props, and then a kid came up and was like, hey, you should just ask the Quidditch Club. We have props. I'm like, I am never asking the Quidditch Club for anything. All right, I saw the Quidditch Club on our school campus trying to play Quidditch. Good, no, you know what? Good for them. Like, it's fine. But I just hated yeah. the, oh, what, you didn't ask? <laughs> um, uh, I'll just read the poster we made, which was... Uh, because we had to make this all relatively productive. We couldn't just do fun stuff. Uh, and I have a very close friend I made through this job named Hank, who almost always enabled me. And, like, it was good. So we had Can You Beat the Wizard, which was join Ungeth and Hank in overcoming some of the great personal challenges of college. Procrastination, stress, the wizard, and anxiety. And then we only got away with a lot of the stuff because we had to put disclaimers on it. And on the bottom it says, the wizard is a metaphor for barriers to academic success, <laughs> not a genuinely mystical being. We're going to play Nintendo Switch games to watch Harry Potter while talking about beating academic barriers, potentially with a special guest appearance. And then this was another thing where we do uh, uh, supply requests, but we do them way too late. We fully planned on getting a wizard costume because the uh, part of the game too was... Uh, that we had in making these programs was Wayne State paid for it, so we wanted to make them buy the stupidest stuff possible because we'd go in the back of the prop room and find weird stuff, and we're like, can we make them buy weirder stuff? So we really wanted them to buy a wizard costume. So the idea was me or Hank would slip away and then come back in dressed as the wizard, been like, oh, you can't succeed economically. (laughs) Leave, wizard! And, like, it's just... The genuinely mystical being. Yeah, yeah, and and the idea is... uh, the idea when I made a lot of this stuff was I wanted people to remember any of these events, right? Because, you know, sometimes it's nice to have a solemn, peaceful moment, hot cocoa, but I wanted people to be like, yo, when I was at college, I remember this weird thing that happened, and I wanted to be in everyone's story of that. I just realized, not in a problematic way, just the fun stories. <laughs> I'm sure you will be. Like, if I was a student who attended these, I would definitely have a lot of stories. Um, there's Dinosaur Party, which is the apt part, and I'll get to that at the end, but I just want to give it context more, because, uh, again, of what we got away with. We had Get Baked with Hank, where Hank made cinnamon rolls, and then we did Roll Up with Ungus, where I made cinnamon rolls. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, uh, what what was from, with the cinnamon rolls? Because, okay, so we want to just, sometimes it's like, hey, talk about diversity, talk about, and that's important conversation to have, but sometimes it's uh, uh, just, you want to just make snacks for people, get it funded for by the university, use the kitchen, uh, the the communal kitchens, and it's like, you know, hey, are you studying, having a good time? Here's a cinnamon roll, right? Um, and... And, like, yeah, that was the idea, so we had to justify it. And we're like, okay, you know, but we're like, if we just say get cinnamon rolls, people aren't going to be entertained, and we can't advertise it in a stupid way. So we had to name it Get Baked with Hank, which is, you know, a euphemism for baking. Um, And then I did it again the next year, and I wanted to do the same thing, but I'm like, I can't, it doesn't, it's not as catchy, Get Baked with Ungeth, it's Roll Up with Ungeth, which was cinnamon rolls and fruit roll-ups. Um... I also had one which was Let's Talk About Dying, which was not about death, if I remember correctly. I think it was about dying fabrics, but we got told no, because you can't have a sign that says Let's Talk About Dying, um, <laughs> apparently. Uh, I'm going to pass on, let me look. Uh, Stay Fresh, where we made air fresheners, and I temporarily blinded myself with mint. Um, per- not, uh, not purposefully. Yeah, t- yeah, not purposely. I-, I was talking to someone being like, ha, my mom's allergic to mint. And then I opened it, and then, like, I, I was so fresh. Mm-hmm. My eyes felt like I put toothpaste on them. It was so oh. unbearably fresh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I vaguely remember this. 
Uh, and then also we had Derek and Angus stop racism, which I'm going to give you a spoiler alert. We couldn't. We didn't do it, but we tried. Uh, just not enough people showed up. It's everyone else's fault. Uh, multiple occasions we had the Resume Rumble, which uh, we watched WWE's The Royal Rumble and then talked about resumes. Uh, and it was just like, a, you know, just fun stuff. And it's just, if you could see the posters, you can see the extent of how dumb they are. We did Super Smash Bros and Super Beerio Kart, where like we had root beer and talked about alcohol with awareness, but we just also just played video games. Um, we had March uh, Sadness, which was talking about depression. And like, I had so much fun doing all this dumb stuff. It really just made me like, I really enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, but the one that kind of spoke to me and lingered with me the most was this dinosaur party, um, which uh, Neha has told me may or may not be the title, or it could just be like Angus Rambles for a minute. And, you know, no, it's called Dinosaur minutes. Party. That was the one you talked about the most during college. Yeah. Well, yeah, we became friends because yeah. of Dinosaur Party. because, And I'll give that context because I don't even know if you're aware of this, um, that when I... Uh, I mean, so... I had a really rough time my third year of college. I uh, was getting sick all the time. I was overdoing it. I was getting pulled every which way. Not really because of the jobs I had, but I had family pulling me in one direction. And I had a really hard time saying no and coping with things. I was very much the strategy of, if you just don't think about the problem, it's not there. Not true. N- never been true, ever. Um, um, so that first, uh, I really felt alone, and it's the first set of my chemical engineering classes. And I literally had to ask questions myself, like, am I going to be a chemical engineer? Because I I can't do it. I worked hard, but I cannot get past this barrier. And I have these ingrained bad habits to never ask for help. And that that's always hurt me, right? Um, and, it, yeah, it's culturally, but it's very important that to recognize that I, I, I had started going to therapy at some point and started to feel better about it mm-hmm. and, like, recognizing that you're not supposed to feel crappy all the time. Um, But the reason why dinosaur parties need is because uh, I'm someone that has always strongly identified with anxiety. I had anxiety attacks since I was little and just didn't know what they were called. Um, And the way I got around that was trying to be prepared, but that only works up until a certain point. Um, And my, my premise was I had just gotten to a good place that second semester of that really bad semester. Uh, and that's where I started to make my friends in chemical engineering. Um, and I had see I think it was a vlog brothers uh, quote. It was something where he talked about someone who had passed. And it, the description was, and it was Hank Green in particular. And he said something that death was the most unfair thing and all, the most fair thing in the world. That it's so cruel to have had life exist and then have it go away forever. But also... Every, it, it happens to everyone you cannot escape it but we only ever frame it in the strict negative and maybe that's just our kind of western worldview on it um but also it's worth remembering that these horror these things that we think are horrifying and overwhelming and completely all-consuming do pass right uh and i compared it because i'm a child <laughs> <laughs> i compared it to something that was massive giant and ruled the world is what it felt like like dinosaurs those no matter how big and giant they are went away and uh and so i was like all right i'm gonna give everyone little dinosaurs talk about you know this kind of personal journey i've had and ask people to tell me something they're they're stressed out about and ideally they can come back later and be like you know sometimes you'd be surprised how different you can feel in a month right Mm -hmm. um and it's also worth noting that I'm by no means any expert on this, and uh, if you do need help, reach, reach out for it. You know, this is just my own journey. Um, but our friend, our friendship started. Uh, I think we said hi. We sat at the same table. Jacqueline, our other mutual friend, exists. Of she is the glue of our entire graduating class. Is how social she was. But we became closer friends because I think we had a substitute one day. And I had Wait, which class was this in? Thermo? This was, this was in Thermo with Pot Off. Okay, I remember uh, this. Um, and I sat further back, and you sat a little bit more to the front, so I could see your screen, and you couldn't see mine. And I saw that no one was paying attention to the substitute, because they were just like, it was uh, one of the TAs, and everyone's just like, you're not Pot Off, man, get out of here. Now, that wasn't right, but that's what we were kind of acting like. But I saw you, uh, I think, have a headphone in and turn on a video. Um, 
of like stuff happening with chemical engineering and i'm like oh good on you for doing work i was trying to make conversation and she's like no 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 i just closed the window and this is happening in the background i saw the tf show i'm like oh, okay better than what i'm doing so i so but that's the thing to note because what happened was i'm like better than what i'm doing and very often when I zoned out in class, I'd do, make these RA posters because they were fun and silly. And uh, I didn't, I remember, I didn't have any descriptors up, but it was just a bunch of toy dinosaurs on a brown background. On the top, it said oh, Dinosaur Party. I remember it this. Said, Nothing lasts forever. And no other content. <laughs> and, and I remember you were just, uh, you were astonished and were laughing at it because I don't think you expected it at all. Um... And I think we exchanged Snapchats and we ended up becoming friends that way. Just because it was... The dinosaur like, that's party. Just the, yeah. Sorry, that's awesome. On. No, I said that's because of, di- of the dinosaur party. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's the reason when you mentioned it, I'm like, oh, shoot, yeah, that's kind of the start of our friendship. And, like, like that. That's, that's a fun story. But what Dinosaur Party was, and I feel like now I've set it up to be this horrible, ominous thing because of like, ha ha ha, we thought it was good, but in reality, it was be- it was great. Um, but <laughs> basically, um, I just had that kind of that realization about we always frame the ending of things as purely bad. So we're afraid of the end by every means because um, the good things in life end, right? You mm-hmm. know, yeah. uh, fr- fruits rot. Uh, friendships can end uh, and we're very scared of it but also you know uh, in many ways the worst thing some of the worst things in life do pass right or I remember there's three things to it you either in time you either find out it wasn't as bad as you thought or thought it was uh, two you get stronger and are able to deal with it or three it's not even um, a thing to worry about anymore right mm-hmm. the problem passes itself um but regardless, that that it's important to not be a defeatist, and I think that philosophy of me framing it in toy dinosaurs personally did a lot for me because it kind of let me be like, oh yeah, you know, uh, things that can be massive and big right now. Sometimes it's important to remember that even in your most stressful moments, especially for me in school, we have a million different projects. There's a version of you that's done with them. Now, bear in mind, maybe that's a C or a B on a project, but it's done, right? right. And also, that doesn't, like, truthfully, being so far removed, three or four you know, years removed, you know, yeah, I'm a little bummed that, like, oh, I wish I had better on that, but also, who cares, right? Like, it's so far removed, and I'm going to take the lesson I learned. But if someone tries to throw that in my face, I'm like, you got to see in this project. I'm like, yeah, and you can't see anywhere in the future, man. You live in the past. (laughs) Um, And, but yeah, so I bought a bunch of toy dinosaurs. I found a bunch of little glass, like, candle holders, but they looked like little terrariums. And I bought a bunch of craft sand. So I filled it all with craft sand. Uh, Definitely a lesson learned is I remember I did it by myself, which was a mistake because I was just running around trying to fill dinosaurs and my friends stopped by to help me because, like, I didn't officially set it up with them. Um, And the posters are so stupid and fun. They're little dinosaurs and uh, birthday hats I found online. Um, But I put all of them down and everyone kind of saw me with, like, a, a folding table and they're like, who is this guy? Why does he have a series of, like, craft sanded dinosaurs in front of him and, like, little construction paper cutouts? Um, and I remember explaining it to people, and it hit, because sometimes they talked about how they were worried about being able to pay tuition that semester, right? And, you know, checking in with them later, it was fun seeing them feel a little bit better about it, or a big exam, or they couldn't decide with their major what they wanted it to be, right? These are things that overwhelmed them and sometimes kept them up and sometimes uh, just made them feel like crap. Um, And I just kind of gave them the toy dinosaurs because they're very cute little things. I still have mine in my room. Um, uh, And just said, like, you know, look at that and remember that it passes, right? And don't forget to kind of enjoy what you're having. Even if it's a struggle, it will pass, right? Dinosaurs are rad, but we don't have them anymore, right? But dinosaurs, if you ever met them in person, would stomp us. Uh, I'm losing myself in metaphors, mostly because of the excitement of dinosaurs. So, you know, doing my best. Um, And, yeah, I really connected with that. For me personally, that was very fulfilling. But I think it's worth mentioning, I I was an RA for three years, and I sort of tried doing this program uh, two other times. I did it again the next year, and 
uh, things were double booked and like supplies didn't come in. I was super bummed out, but it still was meaningful for the people that stopped by and like uh, it. It was still meaningful, but it didn't mean as much to me, right? Uh, and on a personal journey, uh, like my first year as an RA was rough, but I got better, right? That's that theme of that year, that my third year of college. I went to college for five years. Don't do the math on that; you're fine. Uh, and <laughs> for my fourth year, I was thriving. I was doing very well. Um, I had been stepping it up in my classes. I was learning more. Yeah, I was behind for having a bad time, but. I was ready to combat anything. So I ended up um, doing a study abroad trip in, uh, in China, which was amazing. It was, everyone was super great, gracious. I really understood kind of the importance of respecting cultural backgrounds and meeting people where they're at rather than just going from where you're at. And it was uh, this magical thing. The only thing that ended up happening and ended up having a long-term negative impact on me was I, I got really sick and I had an inflamed uh, intestine. So I had antibiotics that, you know, were pretty powerful. And this is just a running theory, um, but it's probably the rest of the story. Uh, and the idea that me and doctors have thought of now is that, like, it really affected my ability to absorb iron, which feels like it's not much. It's just iron. But um, for, I felt myself over the course of a year, year and a half, have no energy to do anything, have be completely exhausted, where I could stay before I couldn't anymore. I couldn't have longevity get through exams. I remember I failed the exam everyone did well on in a large part because I couldn't remember anything. I just couldn't. And I could only ever find myself doing one thing at a time. And I always had recognized myself as like an overachiever of like, I had the two jobs and then I did my classes and I did home life and I tried balancing it out. But like, I, I pulled it in so many different directions that like, the thing that suffered the most was the RA job because it was like, I'm not returning and I had a different set of priorities of like, I didn't need to be rehired. But I, I sucked that year. And like, I don't think anyone else would say that to me. It just, I knew I wasn't right. Um, so I ended up doing Dinosaur Party again uh, and it just felt different because it felt like apologetic that this thing that had been good to me that I had failed uh, was ending and it just was this really melancholy feeling uh, and I kind of realized that Dinosaur Party is kind of a, was a one-sided thing that I had gone with the impression that the bad things end but the good things end too so you gotta make it count and I feel like I lost that year of my life good news is I'm better now but um, when I ended up I ended up going to the doctors and like they asked me like oh yeah your uh, your blood's pretty like not doing things well not to like reveal my medical history that's right Amazon you won't get me um, but like we ended up uh, they put me on steroids for a little bit and then they just gave me supplements and I ended up feeling a lot better but I was like really hyper and frenetic um, uh, because I had suddenly had this new wave of energy after feeling like I had been off course for such a long time so I was like kind of panicking like I, I went from having no anxiety attacks right here for like having them way more often um, but honestly what year was this, this? Is, like were you in third year by now? Just, no yeah this was third year this okay. was something that was actively happening and when I got better it was a little after I had graduated and I just didn't feel right I I suddenly was letting people down in lab assignments because I couldn't stay up um, my memory is still pretty shot of it and it might be a combination of depression but I just I, I, I am someone that uh, is annoying in how bad I'm trying and that works when it works but if you're trying your best and still losing it's a it's like a horrifying experience um, and I'm privileged that it's something I, I was able to diagnose I was fortunate to have the insurance to uh, register it I went to the I just had like a sum, it was at the end of the summer shoot now I'm thinking about it end of the summer last year around September um, I was just tired of it I couldn't remember anything in the summer I had anxiety to the point where I couldn't finish an application and I and I had a feeling like that uh, when I was at like my emotional low point in my third year of college where everyone was getting internships I couldn't bring myself to like entertain the risk of failure wait so, so when I you say will... last year's summer for listeners that's this was so, um that, like a couple months after September, graduation so, so yeah, yeah yeah graduation uh is well okay so that's actually a thing that worth noting too 
uh, in May, everyone had graduated, but I had been doing this honors thesis that I couldn't bring myself to get any work done on because I was barely making it by. Mm-hmm. And then I had an interview, and they asked me about my thesis, and I'm like, yeah, I I just resented it. I'm like, I, do, I don't want to do this anymore. So I dropped honors, and I just graduated flat out. But I also... Uh, there were also other things in the mix where everyone had been like applying to places and I'd have this anxiety of like, I don't have the exact perfect resume and I'd find a reason to not send it. Um, and like, I couldn't find the energy to just power through that stress and get to the point where I wanted to be. So, um, I had a summer where I didn't feel productive. I'd been working with a company that, that had been good to me, but I, I was never going to make a progression. And this was the summer was, after graduation when you decided to drop graduation. your... Okay, because you, for, for listeners, like you were doing your thesis um, while everyone graduated like May of last year, 2019. Yeah, I was supposed to be doing my thesis, but truthfully, I, I didn't get any real And the work thesis is to like graduate with honors, right? Yeah, and, yeah. and, and it, it's just like this extensive research... Uh, that can be meaningful and be published, right? It's just saying mm-hmm. it's finishing. It's the note. It's the cornerstone you finish on, right? Right. And you would have uh, graduated in September officially, then, right? I graduated at the end of August okay, after I okay. dropped it because I just I I had this interview. I thought I was doing well. They asked me about my thesis, and I was frazzled. I couldn't mm-hmm. I couldn't answer about it. I couldn't talk about it meaningfully, and uh, and I realized I just didn't care about it right. and it wasn't doing any good and truthfully it's just a safe face that yeah. uh, oh no I have to drop honors like I, I that entire theme for that year was me not admitting something was wrong um, mm-hmm. and then I got to the end of that and I was just like I don't I didn't do anything in this past summer I'm just so tired and I ended up going to the doctor saying like just let me check all the blood stuff as I saw it because it's what I'm familiar with as pure depression right mm-hmm. and I I how crappy because I had overcome that hill once and I'm like I guess I'm back um but my dog I hadn't had a full physical checkup in a while because I get sick every few months um and I just like get a lot of those tests done then so I'm like you know run everything and then thankfully they found um something that basically I had low red blood cells white blood cells and platelets meaning that like any moment I was in a car if I got in a car accident had any internal bleeding I could have died it would it would have uh, it, it was it was near a certainty, and I noticed it with like wounds not uh, healing that fast, um, and I didn't have any energy to do things. And then like the doctor I went to was not the greatest, but I don't want to be sued for anything. Uh, I did not like him, and it feel like it felt like he didn't take it seriously. Um, so I'm working, and like they put me on steroids, and I'm good for a while, but I wasn't good for good. You know, I, I felt myself petering out. Um, and I ended up getting a different doctor who took it seriously, put me on supplements. Um, and then I felt like I, I was my old self, but way more hyper and very tense about kind of like the... It's like I fell asleep on a train and I look behind me and there's just devastation and destruction everywhere. I was <laughs> like, what happened? <laughs> um, but the truth is the train can't go backwards. You know, it's just like that happened i'm off course so you know what what happens now do i give up or do i you know head back home you know like where where am i going next um and this is kind of getting detached from dinosaur party but it was kind of i became the dinosaur (laughs) um where I wouldn't wish being in the hospital and no doctor being able to tell you exactly what's wrong, just telling you that something's wrong because they were evaluating stuff like lymphoma. They were running all these tests and they could never give me a definitive answer on anything. And like, you know how much it lived, like, I, I, you know how much peace it would have given me if they were like, oh, um, you just have this deficiency. You need to do this, right? Um, and like, you know, as a sick American, you know, or for the people that, try to anglicize it's seat but it's sick you know uh i have long hair and like you know they're telling me stuff potentially that chemo would be a thing and that's a different thing to balance but i didn't realize the message i've been telling myself for a long time up until that point was i think i just wanted to die not that i had said it so actively but i just wanted to stop suffering Mm -hmm. but then when that mortality was put in front of me i was like i do not want to die (laughs) like that (laughs) was very very clear to me uh and like it was only clear to me when it's like all right man you're out man problem solved and it's like no it's not uh 
but I felt better for a little bit, but kind of hyper and kind of felt myself being off at work of just being like kind of way too focused on what other people are doing, listening in. Um, and I, uh, yeah, listening to other people, um, and like just kind of getting distracted in their conversations. And like, I, I had this wave of energy and no idea what to do with it. Right. Like it was just this power surge. Um, and I ended up going, uh, to a doctor who put me on supplements and gave me that. But then when I kept working, cause I'm like, yo, you can't stop where you gotta be productive because it's, it seems like nothing, but just having something to do every day was one of the things I did to stop spiraling into depression. Right. Just having something to do. Um, because you were still like the doctors were still uncertain about what was going on with you right the entire time you just didn't yeah, know and, what was and, wrong and to be to be fair they still aren't 100 percent sure because we're okay. who gets to be 100 percent sure on anything but mm-hmm. i i had this a doctor dr sano uh, i still do and she was super super she gave me such a sense of peace uh because she went through step by step of everything you had tested meaning things that we could reasonably rule out things it could be and then then that kind of connected the dots of oh maybe it was the antibiotic i was on and then i just couldn't absorb iron in the right way um but i had all this energy and i needed to get better so uh to make the covid pandemic has hurt a lot of people but i got to have some growth in this moment because you know i got laid off um and i'm still laid off from the place where i was working Mm -hmm. um and uh, I used that to kind of like for everyone in that first COVID month watched Tiger King and slowly went insane. Yep, um, I did too. And then after that, I'm like, uh, I listened to a song that was uh, from this game that really gave me this peace and comfort because I don't know if I'm conveying it well, but I love friendship. Like the biggest thing I loved to do when I was having issues was distract myself by helping my friends. Like I literally like the anime friendship speeches always get me i'm like yes friendship um and i had i had i listened to a song that reminded me of that feeling but then i just kind of felt this like abject terror afterward i felt the beginning of anxiety attack off of a good memory and that reminded me when i was a kid where i never let myself enjoy things because i almost knew for sure it was going away and i just got sick of it i was just like i don't want to feel like that all the time and I've been going to bits and pieces in therapy, but I really focused in on it. Um, and I ended up seeing my therapist through telehealth maybe once every two weeks and just really hammered down on it. Uh, I have a professor, we both have the professor, uh, Heinz, who's a brilliant mentor, yes. who, who is the eternal engineering optimist. And uh, he'd always been mentioning these books of like, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. And everyone's like, yeah, that's great, Heinz. And I'm just gonna suffer. <laughs> but when you have free time, like you'll be like, I guess I'll read a book. Um, and that really attached to me because it spoke to the experience of how you're really driven by why you do things. And if you lose sense of that, it's very easy to. Um, and it's basically like your whole, no matter how good the, your education is, no matter how good at things you are, Without the why, your whole message as a person becomes unclear, and now you're projecting uncertainty to other other people, and that's such a bummer. Um, And, right, yeah, after that sea of uncertainty, uh, I I read Simon Sinek's uh, book, and it really touched me about, like, redefining why I want to do things. And I'm an engineer, the same reason most people are engineers. I'm a dork, and, and I enjoy, like, that scientific itch of of like solving a problem and you get to do it scientifically and no questions asked like yeah like uh, that that might just be me i think some people got into it for the money or for the clout but like you you know like be a business major you know focus on just the money like if you're an engineer enjoy it like it's uh maybe that's just me gushing but i i love it um and uh then i read in that uh because sinek mentions it at the end of the book Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl, which was an amazing book about um, he had survived his experience surviving in four Holocaust camps, losing his entire family, and the importance of uh, not av- you can't avoid all suffering in the world, but what you can do is you can choose what happens next and how you respond to it, and it really ingrained that message, and you know it it kind of it's put me in a really positive spiral from going to the point where i couldn't have the anxiety of uh 
doing one application, reaching out to friends because nothing feels worse when you're not doing well and someone asks, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Just like that weird, like a patheticness of it. Um, but kind of respecting that things end and those stories are beautiful and meaningful, but that positivity in part of me, that, that doesn't end. That's still there, right? And I can still kind of touch into that. So recently, I feel like I've been thriving, but again, I'm not an expert on anything. Like I, I, I want to believe. Like I'd love to hear myself. Like ten years ago, I've been like ten years later, been like, yeah, I'm good at everything. The lesson I had learned that the the bad times end. They really do. You know, like um, if you've got a pulse and you got the ability to have agency, you can fight. You can keep going through it. Um, but I'm happy of like that initial dinosaur party. Like, it feels like I learned the lesson that I already had told myself years ago. That, that that kind of crappy moment does pass. It's not supposed to last forever, and you can push past it in a lot of ways. It's, pain is inevitable, but you can choose to suffer and live in it. Um, and, man, yeah, that's the extent of, like, the real dinosaur party experience. Um, I hope that's engaging, and if it's not, then that's fine, too, man. Like, Well, the title... The title of this uh, episode is going to be Dinosaur Party, so that's pretty hey, engaging because it doesn't really tell you much from the title. And I'm sh- like, I definitely wanted to know more when I saw the- those dinosaurs on your computer, which was why we ended up becoming friends. I recently registered the do- domain name to ungaspear.com. It's nothing right now other than a pronunciation key that's pretty passive aggressive. Uh, <laughs> nice. I'd say follow me on Twitter, but I, I don't need you people. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it is what, what it is. And, like, I, you yeah. know, maybe I'll be doing something cool like a year from now. I feel like things are going on the up and up. Things are can really coming up on good. I hope it's not a year from now that, like, oh, yeah, I'm trying to do this in a way that's not uninclusive, but, like, Oh yeah, Angus just gave up on everything. And like, you know, I hope that's not the story a year later. And I don't think it's gonna be. Like, I'm not, like, I'm gonna succeed and I fully expect things to work out. Because even if it doesn't work out option A, I'm, I'm, the train is going to option B. If not there, train's option C. And you can either get in the train or get out of the way because it's inevitable. Yeah, I really like that mentality. Like, you have to keep going. Like, life is not going to stop and then things will pass. I and then that's another thing to know too, right? For as much crap as I gave myself for like, oh man, I really wasn't present. I still did pretty good. I was a B student with literally being so toxic to the point where my blood was functionally poisoning me all the time. And I'm still in this is you know conceited, but also step to me if you you know, I'd love if you prove me wrong, that I'm still a lot of people's funniest friend. So, you are my funniest friend, I can say that. <laughs> This is why I think you're like one of the first people I asked to do a, a, a podcast with. Uh, and I appreciate that. I really thought, I, I honestly, I had like a job interview yesterday and I was more worried about this. I was just like, like all right, yeah, <laughs> no, the responsibilities of the role. No, yeah, no, I can come in next week. That's fine. No, yeah, just, I got to talk about dinosaur. I didn't write it down. I have to keep going. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, so I mean, glad. it turned out pretty good. You didn't yeah, have to really I, prepare. I, I, I it's just so. a conversation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and I think I think you're doing something that's really cool in the sense of just having fun conversations. Because very minimum, if no one watches this, right, ever, this is something that you always have as a record, right? Yeah. And I think it's super important. Not that it, if you're not feeling positive, you shouldn't say something, but in being a more productive and healthy headspace, that I can be able to project this positivity that no matter what this positivity is out there right i could go in the future and decide to become a super pessimist no positivity it's out here but yeah anyways sorry one thing i remember i don't want any pity of any of that struggle and you know it's good to know that my friends never let me have it because they know i don't want it Mm -hmm. that i've learned in retrospect that i still did pretty well and i still was pretty much one of the pretty clever at my, even my worst so no one should have pity on me they should be worried now that Ungus at 100% blood and ready to go 100% like I'm not blood. I am not gonna catch up I'm gonna surpass anyone in my way that is a fact that is not an opinion that's a very very good mindset to have fact, I know for pretty much sure where my next project is it's uh, me and the aforementioned and amazing Hank 
uh, doing a Snow Dogs podcast where every week we watch Snow Dogs but act like review it in completely different ways and oftentimes uh-huh. watch the wrong movies. Just different than Cuba Gooden Jr. movies being like, yeah, I just didn't understand the ships blowing up. Yeah, that was weird in this. I didn't notice that the first time I watched it. Um, That's really clever. It's kind of like where, you, where you're like, hey, explain the plot of Breaking Bad to me again. Is that the one with the pur- big purple dinosaur? What's Breaking Bad? Exactly. You tricked me a couple of times. Tricked you... I don't, I don't, I don't Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, if that is all, then... Is that all? Yeah, I mean, I, I hope that you can get something meaningful out of this. And I try my best to be mindful of the swearing. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining us today to thank talk you for about. Me. I, the, I'm sorry, no problem. I was gonna, no, no, I was gonna say thank you for joining us to talk about the dinosaur party. Goodbye, everyone. Love you. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey guys, so that's the end of episode two. Thank you for joining us today, and I will catch you guys next time on Birds, Donuts, and Everything in Between. And that's a wrap. Thanks for tuning into today's episode, and we'll see you next time.